Okay, so guys, Katie and I were just talking. We've been talking a lot lately. She's like on my speed dial now. Um, is that even a thing? Okay. Anyways, um, we were just talking about just kind of the mentality of market partners right now and what we can do to best serve you guys and help you. Um, and so, like I said, when I shared this with um, the WhatsApp chat that some of you guys are in, this is like a real conversation. This is a real raw Katie and I, and you guys probably too, like we're not fluff around the edges type of people. We're going to be straight and uh, we're going to talk about just some maybe hard truths. And if it, if it um, things a little bit, maybe it's something you needed to hear. Cause I know a lot of the stuff that Katie and I talked about today. I was like, I need to hear that. I need to hear that. So anyways, um, Katie, can you, I'm going to throw it to you right away. If that's okay with you, because I feel like some of the things that we were talking about today that you have shared with your people, um, just about what you are doing that maybe other people are not doing is keeping your business going and growing right now. Yes, I just realized I had muted myself again. Okay. <laughs> Toxic trait of mine. Um, and here's the thing. I know all of us, we could sit around and we could commiserate and we could all talk about how, you know, our business isn't growing and people aren't ranking and we're not re repeating our rank. We're not able to hit it anymore. We're blah, blah, blah. I mean, we all can sit around and do that because the truth is last July, I was in the same spot. I actually made this decision last June, but it was in July when I really just said, you know what? I cannot, no matter how much I want to, and I think that in this business, um, and, and I'll just preface this by saying, in this business, we are taught to hit our rank or to rank up or to have people rank, 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 rank. It's all we ever hear, right? This, this person's not ranking, so I'm not ranking and blah, 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 whatever. And so I think that our focus has gotten off of our own business and we start worrying about other people. So if Sam is, is, you know, if she's a director on my team and I need her to hit director, I'm like, Sam, what can we do to make sure you hit director again this month? Which has nothing to do with me helping Sam with money, has nothing to do with me helping Sam pay her bills, with has nothing to do with me helping Sam pay for her kid's school or whatever it is. I mean, I'm just saying that's the truth. And then what Sam is going to in turn do, if I'm that kind of leader, and if I'm coming to Sam and Sam, what rank are you going to hit? What are we going to do? How are we going to get you back to your rank? It becomes more about a thing and less about a who. It becomes less about a person. We have quit identifying with the people. We've quit helping people. We've quit meeting people where they are. And our focus has gotten more self-driven instead of being a people-driven or a people-focused business. And I think that's where a lot of the businesses are dying. To be honest, that's just my opinion. I know there are other people that don't agree with me. There are people that say maybe I'm wrong or whatever, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, when we take our focus off of helping people get to their goals, we start to lose our goals. And we know, I mean, obviously I'm not dumb. I know that paychecks increase as ranks increase. I understand. I understand that, you know, as people... As your rank goes higher, you're paid deeper into the comp plan. I understand that. Like this is not this is not a, a philosophical talk about that kind of stuff. But this does become a talk about the things that you can control and the things that you can't control. And at the end of the day, you cannot control anybody. I can't control Karen, Erica, Caitlin, Beth. I can't control any of these people right? If they're in my organization and they're, let's say they're all my MM lines, right? I can't control whether or not Beth decides she's going to show up and work today. I can't decide whether Beth is going to go and talk to her MMB legs. And if she's going to go and nurture those people or, or reach down and nurture the MMPs that go to make up those, MMPs. I can't control that. That's her business, right? It belongs to her. It's her business. Hopefully I've trained Beth and I've shown her how to run her business and I've showed her how to care about people and love people and meet them where they are and help them to achieve their goals. But at the end of the day, I can't make her work. I can't make her people work. 
but I can control what I do with my business. I can control whether or not I'm recruiting. I can control whether or not I'm getting VIPs. I can control whether or not I show up on social media. I can control whether or not I talk to people, whether I follow up, whether I do a mindset um, um, podcast or anything like that. I can control my attitude. I can control the way I react to my business. What I can't control is anybody else. But if I step back and I look at my business a year ago, so exactly where I am right now, literally right where I am right now is when I made a decision from some things that were happening in my business and a trend that my, I was, y'all, I was sucking high and tit. It was so bad. If y'all have never heard that, it's a country slang tank to, um, thing that we talk about when an animal is just not doing well and it's sucking high tit and that baby just probably ain't going to make it. That's what we say in the country. Well, I'm going to tell you, my business was sucking high tit. It was bad. We were about to go down like the Titanic. Okay. We were about to go down and I knew it. I could see it, but I knew at the end of the day, there was only me I could control. And so I prayed about it and I said, Lord, I'm going to need you to show me the way and whatever the way is, I'll do it. I'll do the way, Lord, whatever it is that you need me to do, I'll do it. And all I remember hearing back was, are you willing to take the time to do it, though? Are you willing to take the time and the effort that it takes to put into your business to become the person that you want to be? Because if I imagine myself being at my goal, so if I start thinking on who I am and who my goal is that I want to be because I'm doing my business for my husband and me to have the retirement that we want. Do I love him enough that I'm going to show up every day? Do I love him and value the life that I want for me and him enough that I'm going to show up every single day to try to give him that life that I think we both deserve? And the answer is yes, I do. But I had to fully go in and fully commit and fully decide that I was going to be that person, right? You, you have to just have a come to Jesus meeting with yourself because if the truth is out there and if we all look at our business, if your business sucks right now and if you have not recruited anybody in the past 30 days, whether that's a VIP or a market partner, then guess what's happening, sister? Your business is suffering because of you. You are the problem. It's not your team. It's not Beth. It's not Caitlin. It's not... Let me get the names back up here. It's not Karen. It's not Erica. It's not Stacy. It's not any of those people. It's you. You are the problem. You say you're working hard. Are you working hard? Are you really working hard? Are you really, really giving it all you've got? Absolutely not. Because if you haven't recruited anybody in 30 days, you're not doing what it takes. And I know nobody wants to hear that. Everybody says, oh my gosh, but I do. I post on my stories, Katie. I post about the sale. Oh my gosh, I tell people I post a great graphic. Yeah, well, let me just tell you, ain't nobody buying from a graphic. If you're putting a graphic up and if it's, I don't care how freaking beautiful it is. I don't care if you took the best picture that's ever been taken of the rejuveniqua. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, nobody cares about your picture or your graphic. Nobody cares that it's the prettiest pay, uh, picture they've ever seen. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you were to go scrolling on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and somebody had that graphic up for their company, if they were trying to sell you their product, you know what you would say? Ew, I don't want that. What is she doing? That's so salesy. Oh my God, it's disgusting. That's exactly what we would do in your line. If you say you wouldn't, you would scroll right past it. You'd be like, what? That's tacky. Because you know what? She ain't trying to do anything to help your problem. She's not trying to do anything to solve whatever it is that you've got going on, right? She's just trying to sell you something. You just became an ad. Congratulations. You are now Walmart, right? You are now whatever you see on your, I mean, I always see lashes because I'm a lash person. You just became a little associate commercial for that sponsored ad. That's what you are. Congratulations. Is that what you want to be known as? The girl that's trying to peddle her products? Absolutely not. You want to be somebody that people can identify with, they can relate to, they can build a friendship with, they can trust, and guess what? Then you're going to be somebody they can buy something from. But until you meet all those other points, nobody's going to buy jack from you unless they know you and then they feel sorry for you. They're like, oh, girl, look at Cameron out here trying to peddle her rejuvenic oil. Oh my God, let's go buy some oil from her, right? 
Nobody's going to identify with you because you're not a relatable person. You're not a real human to them. And we've lost that. We have lost that in the translation between us and the customer. And then we just want to piss and whine and moan about how our business is not working. But you know what the problem is? You're not working. You're not advertising you. You're not being you. You're not being authentic to who you say you are. Be that person. You know why Krista Parney is so freaking successful? Because she don't give a shit what anybody thinks about her. She shows up. She is her every day, all day. And you know what? Her business thrives and it grows and she continues to get customers. And you know what she's doing? She's out there chopping the tree. John Maxwell tells us to chop the tree, chop the tree, chop the tree. And we all think we're literally going out and chopping a tree. No, that just means that you're showing up, you're being authentic, you're connecting with people, you're building relationships, and then you get the trust. That's what's happening. Now, y'all, I can squirrel. I, I'm, I'm way off script. I didn't write anything down. I'm just talking to y'all from my heart. Um, so if what I'm saying doesn't make any sense, it's okay. Most of the time, what I say doesn't make sense to me either. But I'm just telling you from my heart how things have to change inside of you if you want this business to work. And you've got to quit depending on other people to build you up when you're the one that needs to build yourself up. You're the one that needs to get busy doing the work. You're the one that needs to get on your socials and you need to talk. You need to go live. You need to post talking stories. You need to be doing all the things that you that we basically need to be doing in this business in order to build. You know, we're all busy looking for other things that we can do to make money when really we're looking all out the window and everything is right here in front of us. You've got the training, you've got the product, you've got the knowledge, you've got the history in the company, you've got everything, but you know what's going to happen? Nothing is going to happen unless you learn how to connect with people on a personal level. Nothing is going to happen until you build a freaking relationship with somebody. It's hard to, to just, do you think I'm just going to scroll up on TikTok and go find somebody and go, oh, she looks, she looks trustworthy. I think I'll buy something from her and all she's doing. I mean, here's the, with the exception of Jade Free, I'm going to go ahead and just say her name because she is the one that everybody knows. With the exception of Jade Free, there's not a single person that's probably on this call right now that would be able to post a video fluffing and playing with their hair like her and never saying a word and sell the Addison product. That is just the God's honest truth. Because you know what? Jade built her brand on her hair. Her brand is her hair. It is the length, it's the mermaid, it's the, all the things, right? And this didn't happen overnight. None of us got where we are overnight. So last week, I mean, I was running around the house because I was like, y'all know, if y'all don't know me, y'all gonna get to know me real fast. So I'm 53 years old. And I told my husband last year, I was like, I'm going to be a top recruiter in the company. I'm going to be a top recruiter. And he's like, okay, you go girl. You go do it. Y'all, he didn't believe I could do it either. Okay. But I got up every single day and this was starting July 19th. I got up every single day and I stood in front of the mirror and I told myself, you know what? You're a badass. You can do this. You're freaking awesome. People love you. You're going to attract people like flies, girl. You're going to be like watermelon and flies going to be all over it. People going to love you. And I used to get in the mirror and tell myself that and there were days I would stand there and cry looking at myself because I felt like such a fraud. I was like, oh my God, why am I telling myself this? This is so stupid. I am so dumb. You know what? And if you tell yourself you're stupid and you're dumb, then you are. If you sit around and telling yourself every single day that you get up, oh, my business sucks. My people suck. My people aren't working. My business is failing. You know what? You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Your business is failing. You do suck. You are exactly what your mind is telling you that you are. So if you can change that verbiage to yourself every single day, but you got to be willing to be like John Maxwell, chop the tree, chop the tree, right? Get up every day and look at yourself and tell yourself how freaking awesome you are. You know, Mel Robbins tells us to give ourselves a high five. We're like, hey, girl, high five. <laughs> No, you tell yourself the things that you need to be hearing. Tell yourself the things that you wish your spouse or your sister or your best friend or your daughter or your son or whoever would tell you. Tell yourself the things you wish they would tell you. You know what? You're a great mom. You know what? You're an amazing sister. You're an amazing best friend. You're an incredible business owner. Whatever it is you need to hear, because what I need to hear and what you need to hear are two different things. Because we're just all different people out here thriving and, and vibing at a different level, right? But I told myself this every single day. 
And there were days that I stood there and I would just cry and look at myself. I couldn't even say anything to myself because I felt stupid. But I forced myself to stand in front of a mirror and talk to me because I'm the only one that's going to take care of me at the end of the day. I mean, my husband, he's kind of obligated because he's married to me and like, you know, I'm on the insurance policy, so he got to take care of me. But I'm just saying, you got to take care of you. You got to feed your soul, right? The good Lord gives us life every day. And that's something that we need to be so incredibly thankful for that he allows you to breathe, that he allows you to move your body, that he allows you to get up, move your arms, and whatever. You need to be thankful for those things, but you need to tell yourself the things you need to do to dig yourself out of this hole. And when you start to do that, and when you start to really empower yourself, you're going to start to feel like, I really am a bad. I really can do this. It took me a long time before I could really say something like that. I was like, I don't want to cuss at myself, but I'm a badass. You know, like I really didn't want to talk like that to myself, but I had to hear it because that's really what I needed. I needed somebody to believe in me. I needed somebody to believe that I was capable of doing it. My husband had already been like, okay, girl, you go, girl. So then A few months later, you know, August, September, October, I was getting some traction by, by November um, of last year, I had like 10,000 followers on TikTok and I was texting my daughter. I was like, I'm a buddy up in here with 10,000 followers. Get on my level. Cause my daughter, I don't know my daughter. She's got like, I don't know, several, she's got lots of followers um, on, on the social medias, but I had, I was trying to pass her on TikTok is what I was trying to do. I don't know. She had like maybe 17,000. I don't know. So I was trying to pass her and I was like, it's okay, girl. I'm coming for you. Don't be worried about your 53 year old granny panty mama. Cause I'm coming for you. She's like, okay, mama, you go girl. By March, I had 50,000 followers. I said, get on my level, bitty. Get up on my level. I was talking some smack, but you know what? I had to I had to feel like I was worthy, right? I had to feel like I was somebody because I I needed, I needed that something that nobody else was giving me. Nobody else was giving me that. I was giving it to myself. And in March, I enrolled like 50 some mark um, VIPs. I said, oh, excuse me. Because see, what happened was in February when somebody said, we're going we're gonna to qualify for the Bahamas, you know, everybody on the team was like, oh my God, that's so hard. Those are a big number. I don't know if I can do that. It's so hard. I don't have anybody working. I said, I don't have anybody working either. I've, I've promoted out all my MMBs. I have a couple of people that are ish kind of working. You know, like I do have a hairstylist friend who's been working, but she's been really busy. She has has had a lot of things going on in her life with her health and a couple of family members. So she, she's just been on a, a, a different, um, path lately, but she's got to heal from some things, right? She's got some things that she's got going on, but besides that, I didn't really have anybody helping me. And I said, you know what? I'll be on the same level with everybody else. I'll qualify for Bahamas with all of y'all. We'll just do it by ourselves. And they were like, okay. I said, okay, well, none of y'all sound like y'all are real confident, but I'm gonna just go ahead and tell y'all I'm qualifying for the Bahamas by myself. I'm gonna do that by myself. I'm gonna show y'all it can be done. On my GV, on my recruitment, I can do it. And they were like, you go, Mama Kate. You go, girl. Yes. They're a bunch of young 20-somethings. Like they're really young. And they were like, yes, girl, you go. I said, I'm going to show these kids it can be done. I'm going to show these kids it can be done. And you know what? I qualified for the Bahamas. And then I qualified for tier two. And then Sunday, I qualified for tier three. And I was like, watch me in the afterburner, sisters. Like, what are y'all freaking doing? I've been showing y'all how to do this. I've been showing you everything you need to do. And nobody's listening to what I'm saying. I'm going to tell y'all today what you need to do. I have a brand new market partner. She just joined me. She's like gets on my TikToks and she's talkative to everybody, but she doesn't have a big following. She probably has 200 followers. So she sent me a video. I'm going to show it to y'all real quick. Samantha, I know this is like way off the radars here. I'm really sorry, girl. I take it back. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm just going to share it with my heart. That's not true because you just provided the evidence that you do know. (laughs) I'm going to share from my heart. Okay, so this was her first video. Okay, and I'm going to just show it to y'all. She's she's sweet as she can be. 
Oh, hang on. Hold on, because she don't know how to work her social medias. Hold on. She's special. <laughs> how do I back it up? Back it up, Terry. Sweet Jesus. It's at the top. Okay. Yeah, I said, I said, okay. She said, well, critique me and tell me what you think. I said, well, it sucks. Okay. Um, that's pretty much a sales ad. And I don't know why you keep giving me selfies of yourself. I know nothing about you. All I know is that you're giving me a duck face at one point and I don't know what's going on other than there's some shampoo. I said, I can't even see what you've written at the bottom of the screen because I'm too busy looking at the fireworks in the middle. She's brand new. She's brand new, but you know what? She got some thick skin because she said, okay, what do you suggest I do? I said, well, here's a novel thought. Why don't you get on TikTok and tell people who you are and why you started using the products and then do a little demo and not talk about the product? And she's like, well, how am I going to do that? Well, I'll tell you how you're going to do it. You're going to pick up the friggin' vial and you're going to put it in your hair and you're going to talk about how it's helped. I said, so why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and let me know what's going on so I can get to know you because you know what? Until I know you, I'm not buying crap from you. So why don't you try to connect with me on another level? Let's do that. So this is her new video. In July of 2022, I had had enough of battling the gray hairs that were coming through the dye that I was putting on my hair constantly. I felt like every four to six weeks, I needed to reapply dye to the roots because the grays just would not stay covered. So I decided I'm just going to chop this off and embrace the grays. So that is what I did. And once I chopped it all off, it was so short. And I thought, okay, that's okay. This will grow back in. It'll be fine. It's going to look great. It's going to be super healthy. And I can go on with my happy life. Well, instead, what happened was my hair growth was stunted. It wasn't growing and I noticed it was thinning. And then it finally dawned on me, I'm in menopause. My hair is not growing because I have a menopause issue. And I struggled for months thinking, oh my gosh, I'm stuck with this short hair for the rest of my life. And then I came across a product, y'all, that has literally changed my hair life, changed it. It has started to come in thicker. It is coming in stronger and longer, and it's healthy. And when I tell you this product has changed my hair game, I'm not even kidding you. In less than two months, my hair went from so short to being longer and fluffier and healthier. I can wear it with the curl and the wave in. I can straighten it. It doesn't matter. It's just happy, healthy hair. And as you can see, I do have lots of grays, but I love them. I absolutely love them. I put this serum in every single day. This is what helps to um, fight the thinning. It does a fabulous job. You literally just swipe this in with this little dropper like this. I mean, it feels amazing on the scalp. It goes on. It's kind of cool. It dries. It's water-based, so it just dries naturally, and it doesn't leave your hair greasy and gross, and it is absolutely fabulous, you guys. No more menopause hair. Like, do I need to say more? I think not. Have a great day. Hey, In so July. do you feel like you know her better? I, I know she didn't want to do that. She was scared to death to post it. Y'all, nine people, nine people reached out to her about the serum wanting to know how they could get it. Nine people. Nine strangers that she doesn't know. You know why? Because she was vulnerable. She was herself. She told exactly what happened. She told about the solution. And people naturally are going to ask you, what are you using? What is that? Because you know what? Had she come on there and said, We'll pretend like this is the serum. This is a thinning defense serum and I'm selling this. It's from Monet because you know what's going to happen. People go, oh my gosh, it's the MLM's pyramid scheme. Oh my God, it's a scam. Don't buy that. Blah, blah, blah. Y'all know exactly what they do. Y'all ain't got time for none of those people. It makes me just want to go slap somebody. But all I'm saying is, do you see the difference? So that's the difference between when you post a graphic 
And when you post yourself and when you're vulnerable and when you're just honest and you let people get to know you, that's all it takes. Kim has no idea what she's doing. Somebody said to her that the the red eyeshadow was not very flattering on her. You know what she said? She said, you know what? It's not a flattering angle either, but neither is whatever. I don't even know what she said. And I said, girl, don't let people hurt your feelings. Cause you know, that somebody that's sitting in their mama's basement and they can't afford to even buy food tonight. They have eaten at mama's house. Like don't let people who want to say something ugly. Y'all people say something ugly about me every day. That says more about them than it does about you. You just got to remember there's hateful, hateful people in this world. And there ain't nothing we can do about that. But what I wanted to show you was the difference between being authentic and being an ad. How many of you, honestly, just raise your hand, those of you who are on screen, how many of you have been an ad? Because I'm going to go ahead and raise my hand because I was the ad girl. I was posting that graphic, posting and praying. I was like, I don't know why these people aren't coming to me and asking for my product. That was a beautiful graphic. Rude. I can't believe nobody reached out to me about the flash sale. Rude. Well, you know what? You're not helping anybody else. You're, you're just being an ad. But when you're you, when you can tell your story, when you can help somebody, because you're an expert on your hair type. You're an expert on your skin type. What is it that caused you to use the products that you use and why do you love them? That's all you need to tell people. If your jam is the dry shampoo and it's you love this because you know what? Girl, girl, let me just tell you today, I got up for work. I did not have time to get ready. Your girl needed to wash her hair. I did not have time. And I said, absolutely not straight to jail. We ain't using, uh, uh-uh. we ain't washing the hair and I will pick this up and I will put some dry shampoo in my hair and I will be fluffing it up. I've never talked about my dry shampoo, but I'm like, girl, I don't know about y'all, but I just ain't got time. I ain't got time to be washing my hair today. I can't believe I used to wash my hair every day. What was I doing? Lord have mercy. Not only was I drying it out, but I was washing my hair every day. Who's got time for that? Uh uh-uh. Dry shampoo for the win. You know what people are going to naturally say? What is that dry shampoo? What do you, what, tell me, where'd you get that? I've used dry shampoos. I hate them. They're terrible. I can't stand them. They're, they make my hair itchy, whatever. Y'all, you've got to find a way to work it into what you're trying to tell people. And even if you have to have a conversation on your stories about something completely not even related, to the dry shampoo, then do it. People are naturally going to ask you, but be vulnerable and be yourself and learn how to get back to the basics of this business, which is selling your product, but it's connecting with your audience first. You're not going to sell a thing until you're vulnerable in yourself and you connect with people. And that's how you're going to build your business. My paychecks, I mean, I can't make any income claims, but I will say it's over four figures. It's, it's, it's close to being multiple four figures every week, every single week, my volume went from being about $2,500 a month, 2,500 PV, maybe 3000 PV if I was lucky to like between 10 and 20 grand a month or 10 and 20,000 PV. That's a nice paycheck y'all. It only took me seven, eight months to get to that. The question is, are you willing to do what it takes to build your PV like that? Because if you can build your PV like that and you can teach your team to do that, guess what's going to happen? You're going to naturally hit the rank. You're going to naturally start ranking up because people are going to show people how to sell the business or how to sell the product. And guess what? It naturally starts to happen. It's going to take time. And the, the, the last question is, are you willing to take the time that it's going to take to build it? Because you got to give yourself a year, give yourself 12 months, but you got to show up every freaking day, even when you're sick, even when you don't feel like it, even when things are sucking, when you suck in high tit, girl, you still got to show up. You still got to show up. Dog got put down. I'm sorry. Show up. Tell people that your dog got put down. You know what I'm saying? There are bad things that are going to happen. And you're not going to feel like sharing, but you got to share. People want into your life and they want to know you. There are things that are going to happen that you need to share. Be vulnerable. I had one of my girls that said, I just had a baby, but I can't show up every day because I can't get myself dressed and out of the bed and looking like a million bucks to get on my stories. I said, nobody wants to see that girl. 
I want to see the girl whose titties are leaking. She's feeling like a dog that just gave birth to 12 puppies. She's walking around tired as she can be. Can't even make a full sentence because she's freaking exhausted. That's the girl that needs to show up because that's, that's what makes you relatable. That's when you're relatable, girl. It's not when you're perfect. Nobody wants you when you're perfect. Be relatable. Okay, that's all. Well, if I had a microphone, I would drop it. But um, that was so good. Thank you for sharing the your new market partner. Oh, perfect. There you go. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your new market partner because that I think that was just like very like, oh yes, this is making sense now. Um, and I feel like I could go do what she did. Right. Yeah, that was so good. Um I really have nothing else to add because you literally said it all and you said it very well. Um, I know I needed to hear this. And I think one of the hardest things is, you know, like the freaking Taylor Swift song says, like, it's me, I'm the problem. But another part says, um, I'd rather stare at the sun than look at the mirror, stare directly into the sun rather than look at the mirror or whatever. And I think that's just so relative. We don't want to point the finger at ourselves. We always want to point it at something else. There's always, I'm guilty of this. And I think everybody is. Um, and so if you guys feel like I have been working really hard, I challenge you to audit what that work is. Um, and to really think about if this isn't making me money doing what I've been doing, ask for help. What do I need to do? Maybe I'm doing wrong. Maybe I need to have... Katie tell me that she hates my fireworks video. I don't know, but you have to be willing to be open to that criticism and be willing to, like she said, are you willing to do what you need to do and, and take the time and make the time commitment because seven months is going to pass. I mean, we're almost to seven months. What were you doing at new year's, right? That's how fast this time has gone. So, you know, you have, you could be at Christmas making or sooner. It, that's the thing about this business, you guys, is it could be one month. It could be five months. It could be five years. Like it really just depends on where you're at and your commitment to the process. So yeah. Is there anything you guys want to share or do you have questions? I always like to open up stuff. If anybody has questions um, or anything you guys want to share, go ahead and meet yourself. Give it a second here. No, I think we all just got truth bombed. Not everybody all at once now, because I can't yeah. handle all the questions. I know. I know. Shh, quiet down. No, but seriously, ask the questions because I I was there a year ago. I was there. My business sucked, y'all. It absolutely sucked. Like terribly. Well, and I think the reason this call is like so important, I know we just kind of like threw this on the chats and like, hey, come to the call or whatever, is because real talk we're all feeling it right now, whether it's coming from one angle or another. I know every single one of you guys on here is feeling it. Um, I'm feeling it. She's feeling it. Everybody is, but you get to decide how you feel about it. And whatever that is for you, you have to just commit to that process because I know I've been in a place where I just feel like there's so many decisions to make. There's so many, got to do this, got to do that. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should one of the things Katie like talked me through today, I just love you. She's like, you got to just decide which direction you're going to go. Just choose like, cause staying where you are is not going to help. Right. Mm -hmm. Because especially if you've been here a while, uh, having a large team, having things like a lot to manage can very much distract you from what you are personally doing. And that's no matter what rank you are, that is something that you have to just keep in mind of like, this is me. I get to control me. I get to think about what the things are that are the controllable things. And everything else is just noise. Everything. The people who are whining to you, the people who are complaining to you, the people who whatever want to do all the work except the money-making work, the busy work. You know, so you guys I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have a Go question. Ahead. So Katie, what are you doing? If you won't mind sharing like your daily IPAs, your, your four or five top things you do every single day. And then are you reaching out to new people every day? Are you literally, you know, getting in their face with the business? Hey, why aren't you doing this? Or is it more of a subtle thing? Or what are you doing to reach out to new people other than just posting the videos? 
So I go live every single day on TikTok, most of the time, twice a day. And I do it every single day. I do it when I don't want to do it. I do it on weekends. I do it every single day. And I talk about the product and the business every single day. So when people come to me, they're asking me for product or to join the business. And there is no... They just say, I want that product pack. I want that product pack you're talking about for $199. I want to be a business partner. And I'm like, okay, here's the here's a cart. Um, give me your phone number. We'll text about it. I'll send you instructions. Or if they say, I want that VIP pack with three products. And I say, okay, and you're going to have a flex ship. And here's what's going to be in it. I'll send you the cart. Or they go to my bio and I have it linked in my bio and they check out there. So, I mean... There's one day last week I enrolled like four market partners in a day and three VIPs. That was very unusual. It was an unusual day, okay? That's not every day, but it was a very unusual day. But on my live, if, have any of y'all ever been on my live TikTok? Have you ever seen my lives? Anybody? Me. Me. Yeah. Makia, you, you've been on there. I've been on there stalking you. Okay. But- You've been on there. You see me talk about it. I'm talking about literally nothing. And then somebody might say, what do you, what are we doing for the hair loss? And that's when I'll say, oh, well, there's about 200 of us that are on this system right here. Y'all, it sits on my desk every day. The whole kit is sitting right here, right? I say, oh, these three pieces, $148 before tax. I tell them about the, the serum. I'll put it on my hair. I talk about what's in it. Caffeine, melatonin, resveratrol, bioactive debiotin. I know everything there is to know about this system. You know why? Because I became a freaking expert on it because it's what I chose to sell. I wanted to sell this. I know what money I make when I sell these four together, when I add the oil, I know what I'm making and I'm hell-bent and determined that I'm gonna have well over a thousand dollars a week paycheck because I looked at my weekly paycheck a year ago and I was like, dude, talk about sucking high and tit, you girl. Some weeks I don't even get paid. And then- what do I do when I get a $12 paycheck? Oh girl, that's a full on reflection. Go on and stand in the mirror. Go on and stand in the mirror. Go stand in front of it. And then sit there and piss and moan about your end of the, the your, uh, monthly bonus paycheck. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you just set the example for your entire team. That's what they're looking at. And you know what? They will take the pace of the leader. I mean, I'm still waiting for my people to do that. It's It's been a year later. I'm waiting for them to pace up with me, but I ain't stopping for them. It's 80, 20, baby. It's 80, me, 20, you. If you can't keep up with the big dog, then stay on the porch. That's how we roll up in here. Your girl's running. I'm running. If you want to run, let's run. If you want to go live, let's go live. Whatever you want to do, we'll do it. But quit sitting back there whining about it. Look at your own paycheck. If your weekly paycheck sucks, then so does what you're doing. It's your fault. Nobody wants to hear that, but I stood in a mirror and I told myself that you're the reason why your paycheck is $17. That's on you at the end of the day. That's on you. It hurts, hurt my feelings, hurt my own feelings so many times. But I said, girl, your paycheck's $20. What are you doing? You can't even go and buy coffee for you and somebody else. Sit down, girl. Sit down. You got to change something. And I just had to reevaluate what I was doing. What am I sharing? Is what I'm sharing valuable? Does it entertain somebody? Does it inspire somebody? Because if it doesn't do one of those things, then, then I just need to stop. Nobody wants to sit and look at a picture of your whatever. I don't know. People take a picture of just the craziest stuff and post it. Like somebody wants to see a video that how, how did that give me value? Did that inspire me? Did it entertain me? How did it give me value? Really intentionally think about what you're posting and post intentionally. It should have a purpose behind it. If I'm going to show something like this, y'all, I'm just picking up crap that's on my desk. If I pick up this eyelash remover and lash cleaner by Kiss and I took a picture of it on my story right now, I could make that a valuable story, right? I could look at it and I could say, you want to get your hands on this. If you're into wearing fake lashes, this is excellent for cleaning your lashes and getting some of that extra glue off of them. You need this in your life. It's only X number of dollars at Ulta. You know what? You cannot go into it with the intention of somebody buying it off of your Amazon storefront, but you need to give value with the ex expectation that you're going to get nothing in return. Absolutely nothing 
and know that you're going to get nothing and be willing to get nothing for a year. That hurts and it's painful, but that's how you're going to build an audience that trusts you and that loves you. Y'all people yesterday, I, it was three o'clock in the afternoon. I still hadn't gone live and people were messaging me going, are you going live today? Are you going live? Wait, what time are you going live? Did I miss your live? Were you live already? I told Randy, I said, I got to stop what I'm doing. I got to go live right now because I got to go talk to these people. And he's like, give the people what they want. I said, I know I need to go do it. Even though I might only be talking to 30 or 40 people, somebody's going to come on there that's going to find value. Y'all, I signed up a market partner yesterday, didn't I? I mean, not like y'all know, because y'all y'all weren't here. I think I signed up a market partner yesterday or a VIP. I can't remember. I signed up somebody yesterday. I can't remember who it was, but I'm just, I'm just telling y'all you gotta you gotta change something up well i think we just all need your energy every day like your energy around your belief system around yourself because when you were saying that like it's you it's your fault like that feels like that's not very nice katie but like i i relate everything to exercising right if I have a personal trainer and I go to the gym and I go home and eat like a whole pizza, that is not my personal trainer's fault. <laughs> that is a decision I made. And when you relate your business to things like that, I feel like it just makes it so much more easier to swallow to be like, yes, I am the problem, but I'm also the solution. And that's yes. the But you can fix it. You know, mm -hmm. that's the thing is that you're capable of fixing the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, if any of you guys on here have been here a while and you're just like, yeah, I, I know what I need to do, but I just don't want to do it because I've had that talk with myself. Again, it goes back to just making that just to that decision. Like you can be your own solution and whatever that solution is for you, go with it. Go with it because you are just as much the solution as you are the problem. But nobody ever wants to hear that they're the problem because it hurts our feelings. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you look at that weekly paycheck, that's a very good litmus test as to how committed you are to your business. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, customers are going to drop off like flies. It's up to you to continue to add them into the funnel. There are people that aren't going to order. I mean, I had one woman that hadn't ordered for a year. For a full year, she hadn't ordered. And then all of a sudden she messaged me and she goes, I think I want to get back into Monet and order some stuff. The stuff I've been trying. A year. I didn't hound her. I wasn't knocking her door down, but you know, that was on her at the end of the day. She just decided what she was going to do. You can't, you can't help what people are going to do and you can't help when people are going to quit and when they're not going to want to buy the product anymore, whatever, but you better constantly be replacing people because you know, the adage is a third are going, a third are staying and a third are coming. Like just, just remember, you got to keep people coming in. You can't just you can't just say, well, I hit it big. I'm going to take off the gas now because you know what's going to happen? The car's going to stop and it's going to start rolling backwards. <laughs> he going to back it up, Terry, and it ain't good when Terry backs up. Y'all know what happens. I don't know who Terry is, but I know what you mean. <laughs> what? Who's Terry? I don't know who Terry what? is. What? Nuh-uh. Tell me you have not. Have you not seen the 4th of July? Back it up, Terry. Terry, back it up. I live under a rock, so no. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I got to find it right now because y'all out of control. Y'all, what? Hold up. Back it up, Terry. Back it up. Okay, this will be the last thing I say and then I'm going to shut up. Okay. This is the funniest thing that has ever... Uh-uh. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Bag up, bag up. Bag up, Terry. Oh no, Terry. Oh, that, that is a staple in the fourth of July. Back it up, Terry. Oh, Back it up. Well, I'm hoping oh. I hope Terry's okay. So that's what we're going to have to do in our business. We're going to have to back it up to the basics. Yep. Okay.
All right, friends. Well, Katie, thank you for sharing all the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. Because sometimes we just need to have these conversations with ourselves and it's easy to get caught up in the emotions. And, you know, it really is. If you, when I'm with certain people, I feel myself feeling something. When I'm with other people, I immediately snap out of it. And it's like our environment that's around us is just very, when they say who you surround yourself with matters. It definitely matters. So Katie, we're just all going to watch you on TikTok now. We're going to just do what you do. Okay. All right. All right, you guys, thanks for hopping on last minute. Appreciate you. Hope you guys found some value and go share, go share some education and all, all the things Katie said. <laughs> all right. Good night, guys.